I wonder how good you are at keeping your promises. Now, as children, me and my sisters, we were so often coaxed into going for walks on a summer day by the promise of an ice cream, that it would be worth it, that the walk and the wait would be met with the promise of a delicious ice lolly. Now, there's been a bit of a fad across social media recently of the challenge which sees young children tempted by a plate of marshmallows or chocolate. I think it's a little bit cruel, but the point of the challenge is the young child, maybe some of you have done it, the young child is encouraged to sit in front of a plate of marshmallows or chocolate and they're told if they just look at it but don't eat of it, when their parents come back into the room, they will get double. So what happens is the food is just sitting there, the tempting food, the child has to sit and watch it. But if they wait, they will receive more. And it is quite funny watching the child try and resist the temptation of chocolate or marshmallows. The promise is if you wait, you will receive more. Now today we become before our Heavenly Father, whose disciples were told by Jesus to wait in Jerusalem for the promises of God to come to pass. To wait for the one who would come to be with them forever. They had to wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit, the fulfilment of the promise. The God who keeps his promises was about to deliver again, but the disciples had to trust to pray and to wait for God's timing and God's purposes to be revealed. Now, they could have run ahead in their own strength with their own plans and probably nothing would have happened. But instead they waited and God fulfilled his promise. That Pentecost morning, the Spirit of God came with power, with what seemed like wind and fire, and in an instant, history was changed. The disciples were transformed, lives were impacted, futures changed, revival happened. The God who was and is, is the one who is here with us today. In us, moving, transforming, speaking life and purpose. What might he want to do in us today, in our communities, through our churches, in the lives of those around us. God's just getting started. Are we ready for impact and for transformation today? Are we expecting that God might want to do something new amongst us? Let's jump into Acts together and see what there is for us today. So what was going on? See, our reading opens up with the disciples gathered together. They're waiting, praying, wondering what might happen next. And let's not rush over how strange it must have been to wait. It had been 10 days since Jesus had told them to wait in Jerusalem. 10 days of wondering what he meant by the one who would come. 10 days of waiting. How long can we wait for God's promises to come to pass? How quickly do we give up on hearing or receiving from God? How quickly do we go, God, this is your moment to speak. Oh, there was nothing, let's move on. Instead, we've got to wait if we want to see God's purposes come to pass. Now, 10 days later, the disciples are gathered together and suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind fills the house they're in. Suddenly, what seems like tongues of fire appear to settle on each of them and suddenly they all start to talk in other languages as the Spirit enabled them. This is instant. Something shifts. Sounds and signs and skills are evident and the disciples are all impacted. Now there's quite a commotion between noises and new languages and what looks like fire and we're not quite sure how it happens but the disciples end up on the streets and a crowd quickly assembles. See people notice and stop 
and stare and gather in bewilderment because people realize they are hearing in their own languages the disciples talking. These uneducated Galileans suddenly have a linguistic ability far beyond the natural. People stop and they listen. People from lots of different nations gathered in Jerusalem are stunned to hear their own languages being proclaimed by the disciples. Something supernatural is happening and it causes people to stop and listen. Now, why are all these people gathered from so many different nations in Jerusalem that weekend? Well, because it's the Jewish festival of Pentecost. A festival 50 days after the celebration of Passover. But it had become more than just an agricultural harvest-like festival. Pentecost had taken on extra significance for the Jews because they used this festival of Pentecost to commemorate their history. See, Pentecost festival was a time where the Jews remembered and celebrated the giving of the Ten Commandments to Moses at Mount Sinai. The celebration of Pentecost had brought the known world into Jerusalem. And once again, just as Jesus had put a new meaning on Passover, God brings a new meaning to this festival. Not just for the Jews anymore, but for all people. Now, if you know your story of Genesis, if you know the story of Genesis 11, you'll remember the story of the Tower of Babel. A time in Genesis 11, right back at the start, a time where mankind had got way too big for their boots, where they decided to build a, a tower that they thought they could reach the heavens with in order to build up their own egos. But God had stopped that plan by confusing mankind with different languages so that mankind would no longer understand each other's language. And as a result, people had spread out across the whole earth. But here at the coming of the Holy Spirit, this is reversed. The Holy Spirit comes to bind together language divisions across cultures, across ethnicities. A new basis for understanding is coming to pass. What has been separated is to be brought back together. Unity is part of the mandate the Holy Spirit comes to bring. As the Jews celebrated Pentecost for the giving of the law to aid the life of God's people, now in Acts 2, God gives the Holy Spirit as the life giver. The very breath of God to God's people to show us how we should live. Not simply as followers of the law following instructions, but as people with the Holy Spirit in us, living out God's way. As Christmas proclaims God with us, Emmanuel. As Easter proclaims God for us, as Jesus dies upon the cross. So Pentecost declares God in us, changing us transforming us, growing us, leading us. Now, with the crowd gathered, there's confusion and bewilderment everywhere. Peter stands up, raises his voice and speaks. He quotes the Old Testament prophet Joel, but it's Jesus who is the subject of this first sermon in Acts. Jesus who came to earth as a man, lived died, rose again, ascended. It's Jesus who promised the Holy Spirit. And today, Pentecost, that promise was fulfilled. Old and young coming together, male and female, all equipped by the Holy Spirit to play their part in what was unfolding. What was the result of Peter's message? 3,000 people respond and are baptised that day. The church is born, lives are transformed, and the story goes on to today. What a story. What truth that radiates and matters for us today. What might we want to lean further into this morning? What might God want to impress upon our hearts this day? Well, firstly, let's not miss this crucial aspect of what's going on at Pentecost. The Holy Spirit came for all 
people, everyone. Until this point throughout the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit had come upon certain people at certain times. The Holy Spirit hovered over the waters in creation. The Holy Spirit moved in power upon Joshua or Gideon or Samson. The Holy Spirit had guided individual prophets, Ezekiel, Isaiah. But something new happens at Pentecost. The Holy Spirit comes upon everyone. What looks like fire separates and comes to rest on each person gathered there. There's no distinction. The Holy Spirit comes to everyone. The Holy Spirit comes to all of us to draw us all together. We're separated physically, but we're united this day in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came to break down the barriers that have threatened to separate us. See, people from all over the world gathered that day in Jerusalem and each heard the news of Jesus in their own tongue. Language no longer kept people divided or excluded from the good news that was coming to pass. The Holy Spirit came to break down barriers and draw people together. The promise Peter quoted was from Joel. All ages, all nationalities, all ethnicities, both men and women together responding to the story of Jesus. In our divided world, the Holy Spirit has come to draw us together, to unite us, to unify us in Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit brings transformation. How our world needs to remember today, the Holy Spirit came to bind us together, to take away the things that divide us. The Holy Spirit calls us together to work for justice and unity, to raise our voices that the world might be transformed because the world and its division, the things that we have seen this week that shock us, the Holy Spirit calls us to use our voices to speak up, to not be divided, but to stand up for truth and transformation. All people, all ages coming together to change the world. What change does the Holy Spirit bring? Well, look at Peter. As the crowd question what's happening and mock, it's Peter that steps up. But let's not miss the difference in Peter. Remember back with me to that night when Jesus was arrested. Peter followed at a distance and as he waited for news round the fire, he was approached by servants and asked if he knew Jesus. And three times he denied a simple question with single short words, no. He was scared, not willing to reveal he knew Jesus. But look here, 50 days later, what has changed? It's the same Peter, but something is different. Peter, once scared and ashamed in front of a young girl, too scared to speak up, now stands up before the crowd and preaches at length about who Jesus is and was, and he calls for a response. 3,000 joined the church that day. The same Peter, now filled with the Holy Spirit, is made new. He's different. There's a visible and tangible change. What a difference 50 days has made, but more so the filling of the Holy Spirit. It's incredible. The Holy Spirit living and breathing in Peter brings confidence, passion, calling to the centre. What about you? The same power that raises Jesus from the dead, the same power that transforms Peter lives in all who believe. Do you know that to be true today? What's holding you back? Is it fear? Is it reputation? Is it not being sure? Saying yes to Jesus and to the Holy Spirit and see what happens. It says in Philippians 4, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. This is Peter, the one so quick to speak without thinking. The same Peter who was walking on water until he began to sink. The same Peter who denied Jesus, the one who so often got it wrong, is now getting it so very right. Filled with the Holy Spirit, stepping out in faith and being used powerfully by God. What stops us today? 
Do you need to know more of the Holy Spirit? Do you want to be more bold for the one who gave everything for you? Holy Spirit, come and fill us up. We want to live free from fear, free from mistakes, free from errors. Fill us up and send us out. The Holy Spirit changes Peter. At Pentecost, the disciples receive what they need for their mission. The same Spirit that filled the disciples is available for us today. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us, works through us, transforms us. Who is the Holy Spirit? Well, he's the life giver, the hope giver, the truth giver, the guide, the comforter, the advocate. Jesus, in the short reading we heard from Eugene from John's Gospel, spoke of being living water, living water that all who believed in him would receive, living water, the answer to all we are seeking. Are you thirsty this morning? See, that water will help me out when my throat runs dry, but it won't give me anything more than that. It doesn't give me the hope I need, the truth that I need, the purpose. It's just water. I'll need to take another drink in a couple of moments. But Jesus came to give us life-giving water. Jesus said, whoever drinks from him will never be thirsty again. As Jesus is glorified and lifted up, the Holy Spirit was poured out. And the rivers of God's blessings flow into a thirsty and parched world. Who needs some of that living water this morning? I know I do. Who's thirsty? Who's fed up navigating the deserts of this world? With its mistakes and its horrors. Who needs more of that life-giving, hope-breathing water of Jesus? The only thing that brings healing to this world who's thirsty come to the well of living water and drink up we need the holy spirit today we need his refreshing we need his presence in us transforming us one theologian put it like this there can be no life without the life giver no understanding without the spirit of truth no fellowship without the unity of the Spirit, no Christ-likeness of character apart from his fruit, and no effective witness without his power. Here's the sinker line. As a body without breath is just a corpse, so the church without the Spirit is dead. We need the Holy Spirit in us. Have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? Are you a church goer out of duty? Or are you someone that has been filled anew with the Holy Spirit? Have you allowed the Holy Spirit to change every part of you? To shift up the direction of your life? To speak into your motivations and your purposes? The way you think about money? The way you think about the future? Have you allowed God in to transform each part of you? To make you more and more the person you were created to be. See, sometimes we don't want to come to God because we're worried about all the changes we'll have to make. The thing is, when we come to God, he frees us to be more the people we were created to be. Without worrying about what other people think. Without being held bondage to our past or our mistakes. Yes, when we come to God, things change. But it means we're living freer. It's not more rules to follow. It's freedom to step into Free us from the past. Free us of what other people have said over us. Free us from the pressures of the world. But instead to come and know the one that is love. Who made you with a purpose. Who knows your heart this morning. Who has a purpose set just for you. Do you know the Holy Spirit at work in you? Is your heart beating to a different rhythm? Do you want to know your purpose? Do you want to radiate the light of Christ to those in a dark world? Is the living water from Jesus flowing through you out to others? Is God using you to lead others to drink from the life-giving water that Jesus brings? Do you want to be filled anew with the Spirit this morning?
Do you want some of this life transforming, hope giving, joy bringing, peace filling Holy Spirit this morning? How do you want to respond this morning? You see, in Acts, the behaviour and words of the disciples sparked a response. Some people were amazed and perplexed. They could now hear God, the wonders of God, and understand. Others mocked. Some said, oh, they're just drunk. Many, though, listened on, asking questions, heard Peter's answer of the story of Jesus and the fulfilment of God's promises. We're told many were cut to the heart and asked what they must do to be saved. How must they respond to this news that changes everything? Where are you at today? Are you scoffing like so many in the crowd? You can see there's something different, but you don't want to hear the words. Do you just reject the good news and carry on as you were? Or are you like some in the crowd who want to know more? Do parts of the story amaze and bewilder you? What are you doing with those questions? Who are you asking? What are you wrestling with? Why not chat it through with someone today? Drop a comment, send a DM. Let's talk about the thing that changes everything. Jesus came to reveal and bring truth. So bring your questions and your doubts to him this day. Or maybe you want to do more than just ask questions. Maybe you need to say yes to Jesus for the first time. Maybe there's some actions you might need to take. Maybe you need to get baptised. Maybe you need to recommit your life after being out on the fringes for a while. Maybe it's time to commit to go deeper with the King of Kings. Maybe we want to be filled anew with the Holy Spirit this morning. The Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is God's gift to us. God in us, living in us, transforming us, freeing us, helping us understand more of who God is and his plans for us. Do you know his presence in your life? The Holy Spirit, the advocate, the guide, the power source. The Holy Spirit comes to transform us from the inside out. He's not a magic power or a quick fix, but he empowers us to be more than what we think we are. He comes to empower us to be what God created us to be. The Holy Spirit comes to give us purpose. The Holy Spirit lives in each of us, but it pushes all of us to more, to live more significantly, more purpose, more hope, to join in with God's rescue plan for the world. The disciples had a message to share. So do we. Who will you share the hope you have found with today? The love that changes everything. How does that challenge make you feel afraid? The Holy Spirit comes to give us courage. He gives us the power that we need. Now this is not superpower, this is not magic potion stuff, but instead the Holy Spirit lives in us and transforms us, giving us courage to do what we didn't imagine we could do. Stuff that we can't do in our own strength, where our own natural talents don't mean anything. Peter was still Peter, yet had a newfound ability to speak in public. His newfound boldness was found in the Holy Spirit, working within him, changing him. These men hadn't learnt these new languages. These weren't super linguistic scholars. No, in an instant, they had talents and skills that they hadn't known they had. One of the things the crowd say is, were these men just Galileans? Galileans at the time looked down upon. These weren't mighty educated people from Jerusalem. No, these were people other people had rejected, they had overlooked. But here through these people that were used to being overlooked and written off were these gifts poured out upon. The Holy Spirit came to equip them with skills and a boldness to share. One of my favourite quotes, maybe it's more of a mandate to live my life by, is this. 
A ship in a harbour is safe, but that's not what ships are built for. See, we can stay where it's safe, like a boat in the harbour. We can just be something nice to look at, or we can go out and sail in the seas, but it comes with risks, storms, waves, uncertainty. But that is what the boat was made for. Do you not want some of that life? It's boring to be a boat in a harbour. That wasn't the purpose it was built for. It's not just a decoration. It was made to sail on the seas. This morning we've got to move sometimes from a place of safety so that we might be able to be bold to live out our purpose. We can be like a speaker, not plugged into a power source and just be a rubbish decoration. Or we can get connected to a real power source, the Holy Spirit, and go and not just decorate the world, but be part of changing the world. Now, I know what I want to do. I want to change the world, not because of who I am, but because the God who lives in me speaks words of hope and truth and purpose and life. A God who is the living water, who is giving water to those who are thirsty. What about you? Do you want to stay in the harbour or do you want to get sailing on the seas? Do you want to be filled with that boldness to step out and live with the purpose we were created for? Do you know the Holy Spirit at work in you? Have you been filled with the Spirit? In Acts 2, the Holy Spirit suddenly showed up and changed everything. The Holy Spirit still works in ordinary, scared, simple followers of Jesus giving us courage, unifying us, empowering us to go and join in with God's rescue plan. Do you want to join in today? Have you said yes to Jesus as Lord and Saviour? If not, why not let today be the day? And if you said yes to Jesus, have you also said yes to being filled with the Holy Spirit? Do you want to be a game changer, world transformer, light bringer? Do you want to know purpose today? Do you want to play your part? At the first Pentecost, 3,000 people responded to Peter's message, to the invitation to say yes to Jesus. 3,000 lives were changed forever. Why not let today be the day we say yes to Jesus? Yes to being filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes to being bolder. Yes to going out and doing what Peter did, putting the fear, the failures behind them and stepping instead into the purpose and the call that God has put on all of our lives. To be people that don't just decorate the world, but seek to transform it. That speak up, who stand out and bring words of hope. That speak of a different way. That stand up and speak out for the oppressed, for those overlooked, for those rejected. And who boldly proclaim that light has come into a dark world. Hope can be known in hopeless situations. Purpose can be found. The lost are, lo are the lost are found. Comfort can be known. Peace and anxiety. Peace over anxiety today. Are you in this morning? Do we want to be filled anew with the Holy Spirit? Do we want to be bolder? Let's pray together.